It's a privilege to be here this afternoon, speaking to you in a format that is certainly new to me, and I must say, just a little bit nerve wracking. In The Tempest, Shakespeare wrote, what's past is prologue. And so I'm going to be taking you back to my past to better explain my present and future in early math education. The difficult is often easy, and the easy can be really hard. The study of early mathematics learning and play has a very, very long history, but it's largely been untold. How could learning to count be more complex than teaching calculus? I began my career as a secondary school math teacher, and in that environment, play was not the thing. I quit after five years of teaching after a Remembrance Day ceremony because my department head forced me to choose the quadratic equation over my students' need for timely debriefing. I took a job teaching grade five. What an experience. I relearned math and I finally began to learn about teaching through the eyes of a child with the help of an early Apple computer, a logo robot, and the wisdom of Seymour Papert. During that time, teaching elementary, I experienced what can only be called a metamorphosis, just as Escher's metamorphosis today is shown here. That gave me the opportunity to fly off and dive deep. I learned from many people as I struggled with teaching elementary. I learned from Marvin Minsky, the father of artificial intelligence and the designer of the logo robot. He's the one who watched children try to understand their cognition and explain how inventive they were. I learned from Constance Cami, who here is shown with Jean Piaget. Constance spent 17 years studying with Piaget and then wrote three or four amazing books about how children actually invent and reinvent mathematics based on their activity and play. The person who's had the most impact on me is Herb Ginsburg. Herb is the one who took the theory to the street. He said, if we really want people to learn early math, we have to write books, we have to get involved in educational television, we have to get involved in video. And so I took those important messages to the Scarborough Board of Education, where I became the coordinator for math for 187 schools. I was interviewed on my appointment by the Toronto Star and the headline they ran was, math should be fun. After six years there, I came to Queens where I continued to want to have fun and learn to play. I asked my students what they saw when I showed them this sign. They explained they saw an upside down triangle. I knew that we had a lot of playing oh, no. to do. Um, three. Now is three. Can you, can you count them to be sure? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> That's a lot. That was Ben. Ben is the ambassador for counting. He's cute. My purpose for using Ben is to teach analysis. There was a confluence of important things that happened all at one time. We heard that children's achievement in math was backsliding when full day kindergarten was implemented, play was misunderstood, and there was no direct connection between preschool, kindergarten, and grade one curriculum. That became a call to action. With Sandy Humans, we did a, a project in which we surveyed teachers, EAs across the province, kindergarten and grade one. We were stunned to learn that basically almost none of our teachers or EAs had had any preparation in early mathematics. This led to, the, to my seeking funding from the Math Knowledge Network, Code, and the Ministry of Education so that we could actually do something about getting early math on the map in Ontario, finally and in important ways. We began with a conference that brought together for the first time faculty members, 
community college instructors, ministry of ed, education officers, teachers, EAs, and parents. And we talked about how we could do something to formalize this. They wanted more. So in 2019, we ran a conference in Kingston called the Maximizing Early Math Conference with 100 people. And the keynote was Doug Clements, who was again one of the early researchers in logo and math trajectories. I had an opportunity to work to develop interactive online stories for children available in English and French to help parents to have important discussions with their children and involve them in math talk. There was a stunned silence when coding was introduced in the curriculum as early as kindergarten to help teachers understand that the roots of coding are actually in spatial sense. We have a book coming out this fall with 70 activities that will be distributed freely across the province. I'm very proud to announce that with the help of Shirk Connections funding, we will be holding the very first Canadian Early Mouth Education Conference virtually in March of 2021. We have a number of people, including two of our alumni, Natalie Sinclair and Angela Pyle. It's the 50th anniversary of TVO. Here is a picture of Pokeroo teaching children how to count. This has been my latest project, and it has been enormously helpful in convincing parents that math is important.